Hi, I'm Sugani and I want to introduce you to one of my older quilts called It Takes Two. It's a very um, simple pattern but it's a very um, timeless pattern as well. So in this, the one I've got here hanging behind me on the wall is made with one of my ranges of fabric called um, Romance in the Past, which was through Penny Rose Fabrics, which is a sister company of Riley Blake Designs. Um, it is made up of some rounded thimbles, which we have English piecing in here. We've got some reverse, um, not reverse applique, new turn applique in the middle, and of course a little bit of embroidery around the outside here. It's a simple quilt. It's a, a you know, it's one block that you keep repeating over and over again and then we've taken half of the, the circle piece out and put it in as a scallop edge around the outside. So I'm going to just take you through some simple um, quick techniques on how we put this together. This particular quilt's been made in a couple of different fabric lines. Um, this was the second one that uh, we had done and today I'm going to show you one made with Priscilla which is a Riley Blake fabric and it's a more fresh, soft, um, pretty look. Uh, just a little bit cleaner, clearer in colour. So I'm going to take you through those steps and I'll be back with you in a little while. Okay, so the pages that we're using with the, um, the It Takes Two quilt are our one inch rounded thimble papers. So they're a little squat paper with a rounded top on them. And then the other piece is our little small tumbler which forms the border around the outside of the quilt. So if you want to look at those a little closer, this is the shapes that we're using. So that's our little thimble and this is our little tumbler piece. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to cut out all of your little um, thimble pieces. So you're going to use your, your template and we can just take a piece of fabric from here and we can layer them up and cut out as many as your rotary cutter will allow you to do it. I'm working with three inch strips here. So I've got four layered up in there. I might just refold that. No, that's fine. I'll just cut it through there. Pop your template onto your fabric and you can cut through four or six layers, however many you're comfortable with. But you know, cutting through one at a time is quite time consuming, so you might want to cut through a few more than that. And by using the rotating mat, you can just turn it as you cut, so it makes it easier to do that. So there we have some thimble shapes. Now each one of those rings takes 16 of these thimbles. So I've used 16 different colours in my ring. Okay, so we have those cut and then you would go ahead and you would cut out some of your, your tumbler pieces. Now when you're cutting the tumbler pieces, because the template is about the same size as your three inch strip, you can pretty much just lay it on and top and tail these Pieces. So you can cut it this way and then turn the template up the other way and then you're just making one cut for each. So your three inches, your three inch wide strip takes the whole template. Okay, I'll put those to one side for a minute. So what we've got is our paper and our glue pen and just the same as I always do working with the edge of your glue pen we're going to work around the outside of the paper. Now this paper has a curved edge on it, so I'm going to come up one side, now keep it away from the very edge, and we're going to work around the curved edge, so all the way around that curved edge, but keep the glue away from the very edge of the paper, drag the fabric in over the curve, so it's nice and tight, be assertive with it, drag it in, pull all those little pleats down nice and low, down the other side, and then across the bottom. Okay, so then you have your little thimble shapes looking like this. Now what, what you're going to do is you're going to make a whole bunch of those, so you'll need 16 for each ring. So we have three of them made here, and then we're just going to sew them together from here, from the bottom to the top. So you can put your right two pieces right sides together. Take your needle and thread. So I like to use the Milliner's 11 or the 15, which is a Sue Daily brand and I, I like the bottom line thread. So pop a knot in the end of your thread and it may be just a quilter's knot where you're wrapping it around your needle or it might be that lick and twist knot that we're all very familiar with. Pop the needle in between the card and the fabric 
and just lose your knot into your seam allowance. Now you're going to fold those little tails that you've got there that are all folded up there. You can pull them back in your fingers. We don't want to sew those into anything. So we're just going to fold them back and we're going to take our first stitch, come in for our second stitch and then we're going to do our knicker knot. So that's your thread coming under to the left, these two threads coming forward and under to the right. That makes your little figure eight knot. That locks everything off so it doesn't come undone. And then just like always, we're going to continue up on that edge doing our stitches about a sixteenth of an inch apart or a millimetre and a half depending on what country you live in. So just come up the edge like that and continue making sure that you're sewing straight across and not catching your thread around the end. And you're going to sew all the way up to that point there in which case you would do then a knicker knot and then cut your thread. So leave a little tail on your thread before you cut it and when you open it up these will be all joined up and you'll just sew them round in a ring. Okay so what I've done is I've prepared one over here. So we've got our ring of 16 little thimble shapes all sewn around in a circle. Now what I want to do is I want to take the papers out of this and then I'm going to show you how to put it to the back, um, uh, baste it to the background fabric. So I call this the band-aid effect. We're just going to pull these papers out so it's quite quick. Okay, so there we have a whole bunch of papers and we can reuse those if you want to. So they're still in pretty good shape. Okay, so now we have a ring, we have no papers in it. At this point in time, I probably want to press this just to make sure that my curved edges, is, my curved edges are under nice and they're crisp. So you don't want to press them back out so they're flat or anything. You just want to make sure when you, when you go to press it, roll it so it just sits on underneath. Roll it. Just a little bit at a time. And just roll the seam allowance in under. I don't like coming it out all flat. And press it all the way around. So when you've done that, you've pressed all that all the way around. We're going to take our background fabric. So I've prepared a background fabric, which I have here. I've just used a white. And what I've done is I have in the pattern, you will find that you have a little stitching guide, a little um, drawing in there, which has an embroidery design on it, which is this little shape here. So you would place that, I would take my um, sandpaper board and I would lay my fabric on top of that while I put my Here. and then I can place my fabric on the top and I can line up the center line so I've, I've folded my fabric my background fabric in half and then in quarters and then I line it up and make sure I've got it lined up over the over the shape underneath so I can see through that quite easily and then I would take my pencil whatever pencil you're comfortable with I like the sew line trio pencil and you can trace around that to get your stitching line on there okay so once you've done that I can move that to one side and what I want to do now is just glue baste my ring in position. So fold him over so that the wrong side's facing up. Take your applique glue and I'm going to put just a tiny spot of glue, that's way too much. And because I've folded my fabric in half and in quarters to get my center lines, I can then line up the ring to my center lines here and also I've got my drawing in the middle here too. So just make sure it's pleasing to the eye how you've got it placed and then I just give it a press just so that my glue will set quickly because I want to take this and sew it. So give it a press. Make sure to press those seams in there so that they stick down. Alrighty, that should be enough. 
and then we've got it stuck onto our background. Now what I want to do is I'm just going to applique the edge down, so I'll just use the thread I have before. So pop a knot into the end of your thread again. Now when you're appliquing, you probably, the easiest way to applique and the way I teach people to applique is sewing, if you're right handed, sewing from right to left across the top of your work. So I'm going to work on the inside ring. So the top of my work actually is here and I'm going to work from this side to this side because I'm right handed. If you were left handed you would work the other way. So this is the top of my work when I'm doing the inside curve but this is the top of my work when I'm doing the outside curve. So I would sew from right to left this way. This is the top of my work here so I'm going to sew from right to left this way. So I'm going to come up from behind my work, I have a knot in my thread and because our seams are already turned under, we don't have to do the whole needle turn thing, we're just going to applique the edges down. So at my needle, my thread has come up into the edge of my blue fabric here. I'm going to go straight down right next to where the thread has come up. I'm going to lean back onto my blue and I'm going to come up about an eighth of an inch away, a bit more than an eighth of an inch actually, straight down, lean back on the blue a little bit. And the reason for that is, is so that my stitch gets lost in underneath. So when I'm saying that my needle's going to go down, it's going to lean back a little bit on my blue and it, what it creates is that the needle goes in underneath your work. So you're not stepping out from your work all the time. You're leaning back and coming up on an angle. And I'm using the bottom line thread again because it blends with my work. If you're doing working with cotton thread, you really should always match your thread to the colour of your fabric. So if you're working with this pink, you would match your thread to the pink. Never go a shade lighter. If you can't match it exactly, go a shade darker. But because I'm working with the bottom line thread, I'm just working with a white thread right now because this will blend. It's so fine, it just blends in and it gets lost in the fabric. So there's no problem seeing your stitches. So I'm just going to come all the way around that outside edge until I finish. So I'll travel all the way around here and then I'll start again and I'll travel all the way around here. And when that's um, attached to the surface then I can start with my embroidery in here. So I did trace the design on here and so the stitch that I use and I use it a lot is a whipped running stitch. So a whipped running stitch is just purely a running stitch around here and then we're going to whip that running stitch with a different number of threads. So I would do my running stitch in two strands of embroidery thread and then I'm going to whip those two strands of embroidery thread with six strands of embroidery thread. Okay so I have my um, two strands of embroidery thread threaded and I've got a knot in the end of my thread so I'm going to come up from behind my work and I'm going to follow that line around there with a running stitch. Now the key to this running stitch is to keep it even. You're better off to have it a little bit bigger and even than small and uneven. So you're wanting to do a nice even running stitch. So the stitch on the top should be the same size as the stitch on the coming in underneath the bottom. So you can get several stitches on at the one time pull that through. Make sure you don't pull it too tight so if you've um, gathered it in just flatten it back out again and we're going to just pick up some more stitches and we're going to keep sewing along that line there so make sure your stitches are even. Okay. okay so when you've done that all the way around what you'll do is you'll take you can either take the same colour thread so we have two strands of thread here, or you can take a different colour thread. So what I've done is picked up a pink. So I've got the grey in my two strands. Then I've picked up six strands of the pink. But six strands of thread are not going to fit into that tiny little needle. So you need either a chenille needle or a um, tapestry needle, or something that's got a big eye in it so you can put your six um, strands of thread through. So not the end of your thread. And again, you're going to come up from behind have a knot in the end and this way I'm going to whip this stitch so I'm going to 
come up from here and I'm going to go just go underneath the stitch and I'm going to travel my needles going to go the same direction every time so I'm just going to whip the stitch I'm not going through the fabric I'm just going to whip that stitch now don't pull your thread too tight you don't want it too loose either but you want an even stitch going through those little stitches underneath so what that does is creates because you've got different thickness uh, different thicknesses of thread or different amounts of thread it creates quite a good effect like a little rickrack effect so if you can see there we've got the little two strands of grey underneath and then I've whipped it in the six of the pink and it gives you that little rickrack effect so that's the embroidery stitch I've done on the inside of this particular block so you find that's all in the pattern Okay, so in the middle of the um, block we have a little design that looks like this. So we've got these little leaf shapes here and so we've got four coming in underneath in one colour, four sitting on the top in another colour and then your circle on the top. So you can make a template of your leaf. So what I normally use is template paper. So it's a very thick tracing paper. Um, it works really well. Um, it's good with your scissors. It, it doesn't wreck your scissors. It's, um, you can draw on it, it's just, it's very user friendly. So I actually can just trace, trace my shape out over here. So trace on top of my paper, trace my circle shape over here, and then we can just cut out our leaf shape and our circle shape. So you just need the one template, because then we can pop it onto our fabric. Take our sandpaper board, so for these, um, leaves I can just pop my um, leaf on top onto the right side of my fabric so pop your fabric onto your sandpaper board the reason I use a sandpaper board is because the fabric doesn't move if you don't have something under it when you're trying to draw it moves you put the sandpaper board underneath when you draw on it, it the fabric doesn't move so you're basically putting your template on the top and then just drawing around the outside of it with your pencil I tend not to use grey lead when I'm doing applique because I think it makes the edges of your work a little bit grubby well it looks grubby even if it isn't grubby but the grey tends to make it look like that these pencils are great, they're a ceramic lead and it helps when you've got a sandpaper board underneath for them to draw a little darker as well so I need four of those so I'm just going to turn that round now if you were using a fabric, a pink fabric, and you had a pink lead in there, this pencil is great because you can just twist the lead and a different colour will come out so we have a white lead in there and then you turn it again you'll get a different colour again, depending on what colour lead you put in there of course. So I've got these drawn on here, I'm going to cut these with about a 3 16th of an inch seam. Now when you're doing your needle turn applique, don't be cutting a quarter inch seam allowance because it's way too big and you'll struggle with it and that's why people find it so difficult to do it it's because their seam allowance is way too wide you can see my seam my drawing line is there my seam allowance is there so it's way less than a quarter inch have a little bit of faith and trust me that'll be easier to turn under if your seam allowance is a little bit smaller and because you're working on a curve, you don't want it too wide. If, you, if your seam allowance is too wide, you'll get all pleats and points on your, on your curve, this outside curve, so the whole leaf is curved on both sides, so you don't want that. So when you go to put these on, you would... Let me just move that off there. So I've got all this going on in here. I'll just move my needles out to the outside. You would take your applique glue and... just going to glue this leaf on here so I would just put the tiniest little bit of glue two little spots on there so, and I would get a pin and I put it into the point of my leaf there and I want it to sit right in the point where those two um, the center lines cross over in the middle here and I want that very point of that leaf to sit right there so I would put it there and I would drag it out and make sure that it's sitting evenly there. That way the point of my leaf is going to sit right into the middle of my block here. So once you've got it on there, whoops, because I've got oh, my finger, sorry. I'll just do that again. 
it would probably be better if I was on my ironing surface. So make sure you've got it on there. And that will dry just the way it is like that. Take the pin out. And if you need to iron it, it's probably best to work on your ironing surface. Just give it a press just so that it sticks. If I get my other leaf, the same thing, I'll put two spots of glue on it. One, two, probably a little bit too much there. Take my pin, put it into the point of my needle there, and then I'm going to sit it at the point of the other leaf. And I'll have it sitting like this. And then you're going to do that with all of those four leaves. Then I would applique those four leaves down. And then I'll do exactly the same process, putting my four leaves over the top. Okay, and just do it with an a, um, applique stitch, just like we did around the outside edge. So that's the block. That's the, the, all the blocks that you're making for the quilt. So there's 16 of those in the quilt. To do the outside edge, we have our little tumbler papers. So we have cut our tumblers. And I'll just move that board because it's not great for gluing on. Now here's the key with these, you're going to glue these but you're only going to glue two sides, this side and this side, here, pull the edge over, turn it, I'm going to glue the opposite side here, okay, and we're not gluing the top and the bottom because that will get lost into your seam allowance, okay, so when you join all these up, let me take a different colour so I can glue that one. Do one side. When you sew them all together in a line, this will actually come in as your, be used as your seam allowance because that becomes a whole border on your quilt. So when you put these together, you're going to top and tail them like this. But when you sew them, you need to make sure that you marry them together. Make sure that you're sewing the top with the top. So line up your paper, line up your pieces of paper before you sew. So make sure that the edge of that paper is lined up with the edge of that paper. Okay, and then you're going to sew all the way to the end. And you'll sew them all together like that. Now, if you look at that and go, oh, that's a lot of work. Well, maybe you don't want to do it do this part English piece. Maybe you just want to sew it on the sewing machine with a quarter inch seam allowance. That's okay too. Um, you might want to do the English paper piecing in the middle, but you may want to sew this bit by the sewing machine. So you would just put right sides together this way and you can machine the seams and just make your borders that way. So you've got two options as to how to make that border. And then that goes in into the border edge. So that's about it for me and the uh, It Takes Two quilt. I hope that you've enjoyed those little tips and techniques that I've um, been able to share with you today and I look forward to seeing you again soon.